It's baffled scholars for two millennia. It is a puzzle made of multi-dimensional elements, an enigma with roots that reach back to the dawning of time, perhaps before. Daniel explained part of it. Ezekiel and Isaiah had glimpses into it. John saw it all for the time of the end. That time is now. Join Derek and Sharon Gilbert on a journey that spans the course of history, from Eden to Mount Hermon, from Hermon to Babel, from Babel to Rome, from Rome to the cross, and from there to us. Biblical prophecy is coming true before your eyes, and to understand it, you must discern the times both then and now. It's time to unravel the threads of this all-encompassing prophetic paradox. It's time to unravel Revelation. Welcome to Unraveling Revelation. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and we're so very glad you've chosen to join us once again in this beautiful barn made possible by your generosity. We truly appreciate your support. If you feel so led, we've got a place at the website, gilberthouse.org slash donate. And uh, we truly depend on your prayers and your support. We really do. And we're going to tell you a little bit more about that at the very end of the study. But for now, we want to remind you to please download our app. We use social media as much as we can because it is Mars Hill, the mm -hmm. Mars Hill of the 21st century. But there's always a chance we may violate somebody's community guidelines, not intentionally, but you never know. So if you get our app, you bypass those gatekeepers because the company that hosts the content for our app is a Christian company. They're also the app developer. Uh, so all of the content comes right to you. But even more important, there's a community there. There's a little section there called messaging. When you look at the app, the top right corner is little talk bubbles. Click on those and you can join communities related to this program, to the other programs we do. You can ask questions of us directly or ask for and give prayer for one another. And that's the most active section of the app. As well it should be because we are called to minister to one another and to pray for one another, to uplift one another. And you guys truly do that for one another and for us. And we really, really appreciate it. Yes. Um, as I said, we are working our way through the Bible, not just through the book of Revelation, because the Lord God Almighty is revealing his Messiah throughout from the very beginning in Genesis, where he promises a redeemer all the way to the end where we meet the Redeemer and he begins to rule here on earth. Yes, it, it's really surprising me of late. I won't mention any names, but there are a number of um, prominent pastors who are saying that we don't need the Old Testament anymore, that we can ignore the Old Testament. And you really cannot separate Revelation from Genesis. You the cannot. Old Testament and the New fit hand in glove. As the late Dr. Chuck Missler brilliantly said, it's an integrated message from outside our time domain. Exactly. It is the same story from Genesis to Revelation. Right. And we watch it unfold. It's wonderful, but that's an old idea. I mean, it goes back centuries where, for whatever reason, the church, mm -hmm. pastors, want to kick out the Old Testament. It's, yeah. like, it's all been fulfilled. There's nothing there. Generally, that's an amillennialist. Right. Who that. But taken to its extreme, uh, this goes back to the second century and the son of a bishop in Pontus, which was uh, now northern Turkey, by the name of Marcion, who was unable in his mind to reconcile the God of the Old Testament, who admittedly uh, had the Israelites do some things that were violent uh, when they had to come into the land of Canaan because the Canaanites were so sold out to the fallen Elohim, the fallen angels, if you will, who rebelled against God, that they were told to dedicate them or devote them to destruction. You see that phrase a lot in the book of Joshua. It's they were a harem. Harem, which means forbidden, under the ban. You must eliminate, don't take anything from, no spoil, no booty, no loot. You know, it's the kind of thing that the late Russ Dizdar talked about a lot because the items that looked really tempting that they wanted to take had charge with them. Yes. They were connected to the fallen realm. Spiritual charge, mm -hmm. right. So God said, don't touch any of these things. You must destroy them. Don't take the livestock. Don't take their money. Don't take their clothing. Just mm -hmm. burn it all. And some people find it difficult to reconcile that God, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, with Jesus. I blame that on the Sethite view. When you, yeah, when you, when you naturalize Genesis chapter mm -hmm. six and you realize, uh, th then you realize suddenly the Old Testament makes a lot less sense. Yeah, it makes no sense whatsoever. Right. Because God seems capricious. Yeah. 
and he is not. No, he is he, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right, right. So when we invited Pastor Carl Gallops to come and join us here, you watched a couple of his programs uh, some weeks back here on Unraveling Revelation, but he was also our first guest on the newly rebooted uh, the Bible's Greatest Mysteries, which is a program that we did about three years ago for Skywatch TV. And we've brought it back. Yes, Joe Artis Horn at Skywatch TV said, look, you guys did all the work on this. They provided a wonderful set. They did. But uh, this set is only 30 steps away from our back door, so we like this. And we brought Carl in. Carl was gracious enough to give of his time. He's very, very busy. Mm -hmm. He still pastors his church where he's been pastor for more than 30 years and a best-selling author, and he came to our humble barn and sat down with us and shared some r amazing insights from his book, uh, The Yeshua Protocol, uh, which is not his most recent. His most recent is called Eyes to See. Everything Carl writes is brilliant. Everything. But uh, The Yeshua Protocol, as with, oh my goodness, the, the rabbi, the secret message, and the identity of Messiah, I know. just jaw-dropping. You just need, first of all, get the books. Get the books, but also watch the uh, the Bible's Greatest Mysteries, the Carl Gallup's episodes, because you are going to learn things that well, just wear a, a baseball cap or something to keep yourself from slapping your forehead, because you're going to have a lot of those moments where you go, I can't believe I never noticed that. Sure, but these are things that you really need a a a gift for pattern recognition, which Carl has, he which does. is what made him a good investigator in law enforcement mm -hmm. and a good uh, peace officer. He now applies those skills to Hebrew and Greek and, mm -hmm. and scripture. Uh, and he did a teaching at the Go Therefore conference in Ohio earlier this year, which is what he talked about on the first couple of episodes of um, the Bible's Greatest Mysteries, connecting Genesis 1-1 to the, the crucifixion and showing that in Genesis 1-1 in the Hebrew, mm -hmm. that uh, that, that first verse, yeah, and, and that first verse is seven words, which evokes the 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 image of the the seven stems on the men, on the menorah. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the construction of the words, there is the the um, right in the middle of the seven words is the uh, the Hebrew word et, which is. Uh, there's a technical term for it that I have forgotten. You'll have to watch the episode to get Carl's explanation. I put graphics up on the screen so you can see what he was talking about, but it's it's just two letters. It's the Aleph and the Tav, mm -hmm. or in Greek, it'd be the Alpha and the Omega. Exactly, exactly. And the Tav in proto-Hebraic script, and this gets back to another episode, by the way, of The Bible's Greatest Mysteries with Dr. Doug Petrovich. If you go back and re watch those episodes about his book, Origins of the Hebrews, where he talks about the origins of Hebrew script and how it, in his research, it shows that it was created by the sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. The proto-Hebraic script looks like a cross, but not just a standing up cross, a cross that is bent over as though it's underweight. Yes. So you've got the Aleph and the Tav, the Tav being... A, a representation of the cross underweight. The Aleph originally looked like an ox head yeah. or a bull, which represents divinity. Exactly. And the creator. Case, it is the creator, exactly. Yes. So you've got the creator and then the cross. Again, the, the beginning and the end, mm -hmm. right in the middle. But then when you look at the words, equidistant from the Tav, the cross, in the center of that first verse of the book of Genesis, two other Tavs, two other crosses, just like on the hill. It's a picture of Calvary. Exactly. And that is just absolutely mind-boggling. And that's just a glimpse at what Carl Gallops discusses in the Bible's greatest mysteries. You really need to watch it, but also I highly recommend getting those books. They're available at Amazon. You can get, is there a... a CarlGallops.com. And if you get them from Carl's website, he signs them. So. But I was going to ask, do we have an audio version of that yet? I don't know. Defender Books is slowly rolling out audio versions of many of their books, many of the past books. Right, right. Working through uh, the back catalog. Mm -hmm. um, our new book, The Gates of Hell, which we just happen to have here on oh, set. How, handy. how convenient. Uh, almost as though we planned it. Um, it is also available for Kindle, but it has an Audible audiobook as well. So you can get that at Amazon or at audible.com. Um, but uh, yes, the back catalog is, uh, they're working through this as uh, as we speak because 
since COVID, especially when people realized, hey, listening to books, uh, especially if you've got to drive or if you need mm -hmm. eyes front while you're mowing lawn or something, it's a, it's a great way to consume the content and get the information. Um, so anyway, Audible, uh, another way to uh, get these, this information. But uh, in, in the third episode of The Bible's Greatest Mysteries, which I just edited last night as we're recording oh, this, uh, Carl connects Genesis 1-1 to the 22nd Psalm, and also Isaiah 52 and 53, oh. which are prophetic. This 22nd Psalm, you probably know, is the one that begins with the words, Jesus spoke on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's Psalm 22, verse one. And it concludes, and I hadn't noticed this before, or maybe we'd done it in our Bible study and I'd forgotten it, the last words of verse 31 of Psalm 22, he has done it. Oh, it's finished. It is finished. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. And of course, in the middle of Psalm 22 is, many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we've learned over the past 10 years of research now, um, as scholar Robert Miller put, uh, wrote it in his paper, The Bales of Bashan, these bulls in Psalm 22 are not bovine, they are divine, meaning they are supernatural. Don't you wish you'd thought of that? I, I, do. Know, I do, that's why I quote it and I wanna give him credit because it's a brilliant, uh, brilliant line. Every time. But his paper is uh, even more brilliant. He goes into uh, agronomy and archeology span to show mm -hmm. that Bashan was a terrible place for raising cattle. So there is no way these bulls and the fat beasts of Bashan mentioned by Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 39 are not yeah. natural. Bashan was a terrible place for raising livestock. Mm -hmm. Yes, you could shepherd goats and sheep there, but cattle, forget it, not happening. And so when you see these mentions here, like here in Ezekiel 39, Amos, who mentions the fat cows of Bashan, he ta they're talking about supernatural entities connected to a region known to be the entrance to the place of the, the entrance to the netherworld mm -hmm. and sacred to the dead, oh which we cover in depth in the gates of hell because Bashan is where Jesus got baptized, not not across from Jericho where everybody thinks. So We have a, a documentary, a travel documentary that we're putting together specifically showing those locations. Right, right, megalithic sites. In fact, we think there's a megalithic site on the hill above the place where we think Jesus was baptized. It's, we don't think there is, there is. It's there, we Well, I mean, we think it. that's where Jesus was baptized. Yeah. Yes, we explored the megalithic site. Yeah. Um, probably dates back 6,000 years, but it was in Bashan across the Jordan, mm -hmm. east of the Jordan River, but it's also only a half a mile from Bethsaida where yeah. the first three disciples were called, Andrew, Peter, and Philip. Yep, so. Bethany, Batania is, or Bethania, depending mm -hmm. on how you, it's just another pronunciation of Bashan. Right. The T-H and the S-H were interchanged depending upon what region you were from. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that was important and Jesus signaled its importance right from the beginning of his ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll talk about that uh, more probably on a future program because with only 12 minutes to go, just covering the, uh, the remaining part of what Carl, and we're not doing it justice. So again, this is just our way of sort of teasing the Bible's greatest mysteries and what yeah. Carl discussed because it is prophetically significant. Yes, the great thing about the Bible's greatest mysteries is it's not broadcast. It does not have to be a specific length. It can go as long or short as we want to go. Yes. And so some of his episodes are a little longer than 2830. Right, right. Uh, but because this does have to fit into a network schedule, thanks to our friends at the PTL Network. Yes, thank, thank you very you. much. Love you guys. Uh, we do need to keep this to a manageable length, a specific length, and because of that, we need to take a break. Yep. Well, we'll be back with more Unraveling Revelation after this. Our new book, The Gates of Hell, is available now, and we have a special offer on it at the Gilbert House store. You know, you're not going to find a deal like this anywhere else. You're going to get the book, which is a $21.95 value. You're going to get three DVDs. More than 12 hours of video content, plus the book for just $45. That's half price. That's half price, because the whole package of retail is over $90. The Gates of Hell tackles mysteries like where was Jesus baptized and why did he choose to get baptized in a place known as the Land of the Serpent? Oh my goodness, you want this deal. This is the kind of thing that you can share with your friends, share with your pastor, read again, because trust me, the, the source information that Derek and I used for this 
you're not going to find it anywhere else. Right. It's not just an archaeological or historical curiosity. It is relevant to us today. Again, a special offer for the month of October only at gilberthouse.org slash store. Welcome back to Unraveling Revelation. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and we want to remind you to go to our website, gilberthouse.org slash travel. That way you can see exactly where we're going in Israel next spring. We plan to show you those locations that we visited in recent years that are spiritually and prophetically significant, like Gilgal Rephaim in the heart of ancient Bashan. We plan to go to this site that we believe where, was just above where Jesus got baptized on the Jordan River, north of the Sea of Galilee. And it may be where he fed the 5,000. Right. We have reasons for believing that, and it was Doug Van Dorn that pointed that out to us. Go to gilberthouse.org slash travel. Consider going with us. Now, we understand that you may be looking at what's going on in Israel and thinking there's no way that they're going to go. We plan to go. If for some reason, by December 15th or so, if it still looks like the war is going to continue, we will change the dates. You can go ahead and sign up, change the dates. If you cannot go on the new date, you get your money back. How good is that? Yeah, we had to do that during the COVID lockdowns. So uh, Lipkin Tours, very experienced in having to accommodate rescheduling. So uh, you'll find the latest information always at gilberthouse.org slash travel. Our special guests, Doug Van Dorn, Dr. Judd Burton, and Timothy Alberino, um, gilberthouse.org slash travel. Please do. Also, um, while you're there, check yeah. out the store because we've got... Uh, we got mugs, we got mugs. hats. I need one of those hats actually because as you can see, I'm blinking a lot. My eyes are still really bothering me. These lights are just driving my eyes crazy and I can't wear makeup yet. Mm. But I am eventually going to get there because the Lord God Almighty has promised to fix them. Amen. And he will in his time. Amen. So yes. Uh, Psalm 22, again, really prophetically significant. Jesus signals its importance from the cross by quoting from the first verse and the last verse. Mm -hmm. Alpha and why, Omega. Alpha and Omega once again. And Carl talks more about the the uh, the Aleph and the Tav mm -hmm. in Psalm 22. And then he connects this to Isaiah 52. Uh, he talks about the, um, the, the, the significance, the symbolic meaning of the name Yeshua. And the, the fact that in, in Proto-Hebraic, the characters had specific symbolic meanings. Mm -hmm. And uh, also what, what's really interesting is, is how, and Carl demonstrates this, the name Yeshua is essentially symbolized in, in your hand. You've got the, uh, the Yod, uh, it, it represented the thumb, the, the uh, three fingers in the middle look like the sheen. Mm -hmm. There's a, a character called the Ayin that's in there that, uh, is, is like a little Y, and you see the, the, this in the, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I'm butchering what Carl Please said. Please read but again, his book, The Yeshua Protocol, if, if or, you, watch. or watch The Bible's Greatest Mysteries, and Carl explains all of this, but it's, but it's in your hand, and the, the characters, when you look at their meaning, it essentially reads, uh, the, they, they mean the Lord with his outstretched hand pinned by a nail or, or a spear, mm -hmm. Um, so the world may see his salvation, his Yeshua. And then and that when day you, is coming. And that day is coming, uh, but that day, all, it's an already but not yet, mm -hmm. because in the year 30 or 33 AD, mm -hmm. depending on the, the timeline, um, he was pierced. And this is why these crucifixion prophecies in the Old Testament are often avoided by the rabbis. Psalm mm -hmm. 22 for one, Saul, or Isaiah 52 and 53 for another. Also, mm -hmm. Zechariah 12. Mm -hmm. uh, they will look on me, on him whom they have pierced and mourned. And, and that's the not yet. He was pierced. The, correct, they are correct. Going to realize he was pierced when he returns. Yes. But in Psalm 50, or Psalm, excuse me, Isaiah 52 10, after explaining the symbolic meaning of the characters in the name Yeshua, uh, he says, now read Isaiah 52, verse 10. And, and you'll see when you watch that program, I just went, oh. Mm -hmm. Yahweh, the Lord, has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation, the Yeshua mm -hmm. of our God. So um, this, again, 
embedded in the symbolic meaning of the characters of the name Yeshua. Trans Isn't that wonderful? Which is amazing because this is not something that those who developed the proto hebraic script, as Doug Petrovich believes, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, it's not something the rabbis would have known or thought about by the time of the birth of Jesus. But as Rabbi Zev Porat, Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, Carl's very good friend, our good friend, uh, his co-author on the rabbi, the secret message and the meaning or the identity of Messiah, he has discussions with the ultra-Orthodox rabbis who are telling him to stop teaching this sort of thing mm -hmm. because when Orthodox Jews, religious Jews see this, they, many of them are convicted yes, and then, and then come to accept Yeshua HaMashiach. And so they're telling him, stop teaching this, you're confusing our people. And Zev's response is, according to Carl, no, you're confusing them by changing the shape of the letters because modern mm -hmm. Hebrew does not look like Proto-Hebraic script. Right. The Aleph no longer looks like the ox mm -hmm. head. The Tav no longer looks like a cross. Right. It's been changed over the centuries so that those meanings are hidden. And uh, Carl and Zev are bringing this to light, and it is astonishing. Isn't it wonderful? It is. It is. His word in the original language, in the original way of writing the that original language. alphabet. Yes, mm -hmm. it is really an, an amazing thing. So, yes, please. The Bible's greatest mysteries available now on the internet. You can find it at YouTube. The address is at the Bible's greatest mysteries. I know it's long, but. That's the one that was available to us. Or better yet, just get our app. Our, we've also got it on our Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV, Fire Stick, Fire TV channel. Uh, and you can watch all of our video content on, on those. Um, By the way, my podcast is now out. Oh, yes. The Armored Sheep. <laughs> your, your discussion of the 23rd Psalm in the most recent episode, I thought was really wonderful. And I am going to go into that very deeply on a future episode. I have all of these ideas for future episodes sort of mapped out in my head. And the way I map out my books, <laughs> yes, the Red Wing Saga does have a plan, and it, I'm slowly getting there. And because of my eyes, it is very slow. But the Lord, again, I trust in Him. And in a few minutes, we're going to tell you more about how we trust in Him. Mm. But Carl Gallops, yeah, you need to go to his website. Right, right. And, and his reference of the, the uh, Zechariah 12 prophecy, which, as you say correctly, is a future prophecy, which we've discussed in this program in the past. But again, when you compare this to Psalm 22 and uh, Isaiah 52, mm -hmm. uh, it is really, is really astonishing. And you see, this is why Isaiah 52 and 53, the rabbis don't mention, but they don't really discuss Zechariah 12 verse 10 either, which is a prophecy of that day, which is the day of the Lord in the Old Testament, the day when he comes and actually takes the field against the enemies of God who've come against Jerusalem. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, which kind of suggests that in the future, the house of David and the house of Israel, which is the house of Judah, which is mm -hmm. mentioned previous to this in Zechariah 12, are in Jerusalem at the time of the end. You know, that is an interesting point. Because there is a teaching out there, a conspiracy theory, if you will, that says that the Jews of Israel today are not real Jews. Oh, I know. And you've yeah. got a wonderful presentation all about that. And uh, you've even started working on a documentary. Yes. We'll tell you more about that as we get closer to release. But anyway, I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy so that when they look on me... God speaking, when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only, ch only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps for a firstborn. So this crucifixion prophecy on him whom they have pierced, yet to be fulfilled, suggests that there's a future date when the house of David, the Jews, will look on the Messiah and realize what they've done there and is mourn. There is that prophecy, and in the next program, we'll get into the sort of parallel prophecy about how they will react and are to react when they see all of the things happening that unveil the Antichrist. Mm, mm -hmm. The book of Revelation is the un unveiling of the, G of the Lord Jesus Christ, the true Messiah. The anti-Messiah yes. is also going to be unveiled. That's and right. And when they see that, 
they're not to react quite the same way. But before we go today, I want to, first of all, thank you for your prayers. You guys have undergirded us with prayer for all of these many years that we've been in full-time ministry, even even when we were just in part-time ministry, even when we first started and we had no idea that the Lord had all of these plans in mind for us. Well, Derek has run up against a health issue, mm. and because of that, he is going to go in for surgery on November 8th to repair a couple of aneurysms yeah. in his iliac artery. Yeah, that's the uh, the big artery that splits off about here around your belly button, one to each leg. And on the left side, as they were trying to diagnose uh, the cause of some numbness that I've been experiencing mm -hmm. in my toes, uh, which began about 18 months ago, yeah. they sent me in for some cardiac testing, uh, some vascular testing, and they discovered these uh, aneurysms. Mm -hmm. Now they're both small. Um, they're, they're at a size where they're at low risk of rupture, but because that artery is so large, when they do rupture, the risk of mortality or the mortality rate is very high. It's um, as high as 80%. And yeah. we, that's assuming you can get to the hospital really fast. We're an hour away from a hospital. Right. But we just want to thank you for your prayers for this. I know the Lord's got this. I absolutely yeah. know he's yeah, got Yeah, and, and the fact is that this was discovered because I went in for a completely different thing. Because these are usually silent until they blow. Right, right. And because the nurse practitioner, God bless her, said, I think there's a vascular cause for this. They mm -hmm. sent me for testing the next day, which yep. kind of threw our schedule off last week as I suddenly, oh, okay, I had things to do on Tuesday, but instead I'm gonna spend the whole day driving between Springfield and Branson. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they, they discovered this when they're still small. Um, one of them is, well, uh, too much information, um, but TLDR. neither- TLDR. <laughs> yeah, TLDR. The, the bottom line is this, they're gonna go in November 8th and essentially insert what amounts to a stent Mm -hmm. It's not quite the same thing, but essentially it will. Uh, it's repairing it. Yeah, it's like patching the uh, the inner tube. Yep, and yeah, opening from it from the inside. So it'll stay open. Right, and preventing blood from pushing on those aneurysms, right. so that there's no risk that the arterial wall gives exactly. out. Exactly. And um, so there, there's always risk when you are in surgery, as my dad used to say, a minor procedure is one on somebody else. Yeah. But the risk is a lot lower than waiting to see if these things actually get worse, because that's yeah. So we discovered it early, and that's because the Lord had me open my mouth and say something about something that was completely unrelated, apparently. So we will perhaps have some intermittent schedule uh, schedules during the month of uh, November. I'm praying for enough recovery that we'll be at the Branson Christmas mm -hmm. Prophecy Conference without any uh, interruptions. In fact, my final post-op will be the morning the conference begins. <laughs> I know. So I said, schedule me early that day so we can get down to Branson for this conference. Well, go to Branson because we want to hug your neck and thank you in person for all of your prayers and your support. Yeah, you can find out more about that, by the way, BransonChristmasProphecyConference.com. I plan to be there, oh, yeah. God willing. We're going to be will. there. It's always in his hands. Every day is in his hands. Amen. So thank you for watching. This is Unraveling Revelation. Unraveling Revelation is a viewer-supported outreach of Gilbert House Ministries. Follow us online at unravelingrevelation.tv and gilberthouse.org. We'd love to hear from you. Contact us through our websites or drop us a line at P.O. Box 78, Crane, Missouri, 65633.